same. So, hey, don't forget me, you stupid fucker. Halloween's over, and that doesn't mean that we don't have to do Halloween Havoc 1995. Yeah. Now, I did this on the WWE Network, and saved it, and I watched it, and yeah, that was a pretty interesting show. Mm-hmm. Not having watched that Don't touch me there, you up, moron. It kind of was very cool to see... The beginnings of Paul White's career. Yeah. Also seeing some heel turns and yeah. So it was a pretty cool night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the early stages of Paul White's career were very, very interesting. WCW basically made him this like indestructible force and would just go in and just Beat the shit out of. I don't like the sense of that kid. And everybody. I yeah. mean, he had matches and beat up some of the toughest dudes in wrestling: Ming, Barbarian, Kevin Sullivan. Oh yeah, Macho Man, maybe. Yeah, you could say that, but I mean, like, it was just one of those things where he would. Just beat up anybody, and the fact that he whoa, whoa shit, get up there. what the fuck is that? The fact that WCW gave him the world title, his first match with the company, and he's only like 23, 24 mm-hmm. years old, is like that's insane. But that is how much confidence WCW had in Paul White, even though Paul White was very green to the business. Yeah. That used to be green. And you know, you look at the the beginnings in WCW, the whole kayfabe Andre the Giant thing, which obviously makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But having him eventually joined the Dungeons of Doom. Yes. With, you know, Kevin Sullivan and Shark and all those guys. Zodiac. Zodiac, yeah. Yeah. But this show definitely had a lot of surprises in it as well. Is it it made good? me realize that, yeah, WCW, even though I didn't watch it, I missed out on a fuck up a lot when I was a kid. <laughs> so... I think a lot of people were either solely WWE guys or solely WCW guys. Yeah. There were, I'm sure, a lot of people that liked both, but there seemed to be that dividing line between, like, what was your preferred company to watch and show to watch? Was it? WCW, was it WWF, was it Raw, was it Nitro, 
so on and so forth. Yeah, like when you think about it, NWA was still in business at some point. Oh, yeah. I just didn't know what channel it would be on at the time. AWA was already out of business. Yeah. Like Frank Gagne, yeah, that took everything out. And it was bankrupt or whatever. I think McMahon definitely played a lot of people out. Yeah. Unfortunately. So, that's the saddest part. I mean, that's like... You know, you want competition, but as soon as you squash it, what's next? Basically, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. So, there's like four dark matches here. Yeah. Now, this took place in Detroit, Michigan. Right. I know we never talk about what these events are, but I thought this was pretty cool because they do mention Toronto at some point, but yeah, yeah Tony Schiavone said something about that, but... I like team on that Ross, like the commentator, you know, you got Tony Schiavone, Bobby Heenan, and later on Eric Bischoff, and then the guy that does the monster trucks. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of which, what was cool about this night, too, was having Paul White not only face Hogan in the main event, but have the monster truck sumo match. Oh yeah, that was cool. On top of the building. Now, I thought about this earlier, I think... Just like the Hollywood Street Fight, I would think that they did this at a different night in a different location, thinking it's on the roof. I don't know. Like, I don't know how you could get two behemoth trucks on top of a roof. Yeah, on the roof of a building. Yeah. Did you fight? Yeah. Especially having. Paul White fall into the Detroit River. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll get to that eventually, but... Yeah. So we got the dark match, we've got... Disco Inferno and Eddie Guerrero. Ooh, nice. And My favorite. They didn't, they mean, they didn't show these anyway, but... Mm -hmm. When you look at Disco Inferno's career, you know, he definitely came back uh, to Impact for a while. I mean, he hasn't been around in a long time mm -hmm. since, but he's still young enough that he can fucking go. Oh, yeah. And he didn't have much of a good career at WCW. He was more or less just a gimmick. Pretty much, yeah. Now, Eddie still had a lot of his demons. Yeah. So, he can imagine some of the matches that... Oh, she's looking at me. He wasn't in that. Oh, he was like... Jake, you know, he wasn't in a right frame of mind yeah. sometimes in most of his matches. Yeah. But anyways, Eddie won. Yeah. Disco Inferno had one of those careers where he was flashy, he was flamboyant, he had the dance moves, he had the disco music, he had the bright outfits. Wasn't very well received by the crowd. And he did end up with the television championship, but other than that, never really went anywhere. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. But anyways, Eddie won. Mm -hmm. So then he had Mr. Wonderful, Paul Orndorff, versus the Renegade. Then he does the knockoff of the Warrior. Yeah. I have a member when my brother told me about him too. I kind of know that he was a fan of WCW, but he did tell me about it, and it was like, okay, so that's interesting. Yeah. I mean, Warrior eventually did make it to WCW, yeah. but, you know, having the Renegade, it was interesting to see what he could do in the ring. He was probably a roid freak, I don't know. He just had that physique. The Renegade had a bit of physique, yeah. but to say Renegade was a Roy freak? Yeah, maybe that's pushing it. That's pushing it a little, especially when you look at Warrior's physique oh, yeah. throughout the 80s. Sure enough. And how more muscled and more defined Warrior was yeah. than the Renegade. Yeah, I'm sure Renegade hit the gym quite a bit, 
Yeah, I use a little more solidly. No, your hands are sweaty. Like that, but <laughs> nobody could hold a candle to Warrior's physique. Mm -hmm. Whether it was Roy's or not, nobody could hold a candle to the friggin' Warrior and his physique. Yeah, but obviously, you know, you look at Paul Arnold, and like I said, the first time. I saw Paul Orndorff was in WCW. I actually thought, for a second, you know, when I was a kid, that he was the Mr. Perfect ripoff of WCW, yeah. calling Mr. Wonderful. Yeah. So that obviously, years later, finding out that he was in WrestleMania 1. Yeah, he was Mr. Wonderful long before... Yeah. Kurt Hedick was Mr. Perfect. That's right. So. The one thing about Orange Door's stint in WCW. Okay, yes, he did end up partnering with Paul Roma and they were a team of Pretty Wonderful. But his entrance music was very operatic. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. Okay, then, this is interesting. And, you know, he still came out with the robes. Oh, yeah. And stuff like that, so. That was cool. Mm. Polo Roman must be a stinky wrestler. Where the stinkiest Kyle's end here? Oh, sorry. You got a tag team match, you've got a fifth and one team on the We defeated the Blue Blood. Steven Regal and Earl. Robert e Eaton. Yes. Eaton. Now you look at, you know, Bobby Eaton was a tag team a long time with Stan Lane. Yes. And, you know, he broke off on his own. He became a heel. He was under the guidance of Lord Stephen Regal. And it was like sort of a My Fair Lady ripoff or. Regal was trying to make Eaton more proper yeah, and more of a gentleman. And yeah. So that kind of worked yeah. a little bit, but yeah, these guys definitely were an interesting tag team. Mm -hmm. It was like the American and the British guy, and the, yeah, you know, they kind of messed well, I guess. Obviously, Malenko and Benoit were a pretty good take team. You got Benoit, who was basically the technician. Mm -hmm. Well, they were both technicians. They, they were both very, very good technicians. Benoit was the more high flying of the two, especially with, like the diving headbutt and stuff. Yeah. And but Malenko, yeah, they were both very tactical wrestlers. Malenko had the strategic ground-based offense and one of the best wrestlers there's ever been as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. I mean, he had a hell of a run in WCW. He was WCW Cruiserweight Champion five or six times, I think, something like that. And he eventually went to WWF with uh, Benoit and Eddie and yeah. Saturn, they were the Radicals, yeah. and it was an okay run in the WWF. Eddie and Chris got the benefit of the doubt, you could say, and got the better end of the deal yeah, in that aspect, yeah. but I mean, yeah, Malenko, <laughs> he's a guy we really should talk a whole lot more about yeah that is a good idea actually i think that look back at the ice man's career mm. would be interesting and also you know a second generation wrestler yeah his father was boris malenko and then i think his brothers as well so yeah. and the final match for the dark match you've got Craig Pillman versus VL Wall Street. Craig Pittman versus VK Wall Street. You are yeah, so stupid. Mind.
No, and your eyes are fucked. But. My eyes are fucked. It's my fucking glasses. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, yeah. if I were in WCW and Mike Rotunda came in, I would have slapped his face. Like, who the fuck gave you that gimmick? Yeah, I know, right? Oh, uh, you're a money guy in WWF. Now we gotta make you a money guy here. Yeah. Yeah, Pittman, I don't know too much about. I've seen a few of Kirk Pittman's matches. There was, of course, the Sarge. Uh, oh, okay. He's like the head trainer of the power plant. And he had a few matches and then they brought in Pittman and he was a military man himself and was like ag aggressive and high energy and off the wall and fairly decent wrestler not one of the best but mm -hmm. certainly interesting to say the least and yeah I mean you look at Mike and WWF and the first wrestler that I've seen where he didn't have entrance music he just came down the aisle talking shit about the crowd yeah and you know you gotta pay your taxes and all that so mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. but when he came to WCW and became you know Wall Street it was like holy shit like that just you can't think of any new ideas. Yeah, I know, right? But, oh, well, you got his kids in WWE now. Oh, yeah. Hell, his son is the new Universal Champion, so. Yeah, go figure that out. Eh? Yeah. So next we go to the Rats for the We got Johnny B. Brad against uh, Dr. Dallas Page. Yeah. Well, oh, I shit. Kill the corpse of Kermit the Frog. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. I'll get you in the end. No, it really is a corpse. Yeah. Yeah, this is, you know, Johnny B. Bad, obviously, in the early part, was the flamboyant. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know what you call it. And basically, a knockoff of Little Richard, like we mentioned last week. Mm -hmm. But this time, it was like, he still had the long hair, he still had, like, the flashy clothes, but no makeup. Yeah. And then, of course, there was a backstage interview. And you have Johnny B. Bad talking about getting his tires slashed. <laughs> and Damon Dallas Page comes out and he's talking shit. And he's like, I didn't do nothing. And Diamond Dull and Max Muscle come out. And he's like, Yeah, I mean, you know, something about four tires. And Mark's like, I, I didn't say anything. Of, or, how did you know? And it was like, so yeah, they were in on that, obviously. Mm -hmm. Long story short. So they had this match and it was pretty good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like I really enjoyed like Mark Merrill was one of those guys that I mean yeah, he changed his style in WWE. Well kind of. Mm -hmm. Like he came in as the wild man. He still had that style until he became like marvelous Mark Merrill. Yeah. And then it was more like the boxer or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, basically. But yeah, this was pretty cool. And I mean, Diamond Dolls Page is one of those guys that started late in his career as a wrestler. Yeah. And, but yeah, this was a pretty surprising match. This was for the television championship. Mark Merrill ended up defeating Diamond Dallas Page to become the new television champion. Anyways, next we go on to the match with Rain the Savage and Zero. Oh yeah! Kick it! Yeah. Those two, I tell you, man. But I obviously know that the Zodiac was Brutus. Yeah. And, man, yeah, he was weird. Yeah, that whole, that character was... Off the wall. Like, you thought the barber was fucking weird. I mean... Yeah. I mean, he was a heel as well, so... Mm -hmm. Just a whole different persona, and... I probably wouldn't have guessed that it was Brutus. Mm. <laughs> but, yeah, this was pretty cool. And Savage ended up 
giving him the elbow off the top rope for the win. And yeah, I mean, for everything that Savage went through in his later part in WWF and wanting to compete, but not being able to because of the younger talent, I thought, yeah. yeah. It's a bit too bad, but his time in WCW was pretty good. I mean, becoming the world champion and the, I don't even know what else, but and when you think about it, it's too bad that things happened the way they did because they could have just as easily brought him back. It was more along the lines of Jim Elric. You know, they finally make amends, they bring him back to the WWE to do that commercial and then he ends up in a car accident because of a heart attack. Mm -hmm. So, that really sucked. Yeah, he does a commercial, he yeah, inducted him into the Hall of Fame, he's on WrestleMania, he does Raw, and then croaks of a yeah. heart attack. Yeah. No disrespect, my friend. Yeah, I mean, that was a weird time. Yeah. You know. But, anyways. So we go now to. Kurosawa. And he probably wrestled in New Japan or Noah or whatever the fuck ever. And they had some issues with the Road Warriors and especially Hawk. So. This match was kind of the shits though. And it ended up going to Nakakawa Kappa Kappa Kurosawa. Kurosawa. Yeah. His name isn't as hard to pronounce as Dominic Tajakovic. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know what the hell's wrong with me. <laughs> I thought my last name was fucking difficult. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, this was the shits. I hated it. I really thought that they could have had a better match. Especially because a lot of the Japanese wrestlers at that time as well were a hell of a lot better. I mean, Kanta Kabashi mm -hmm. and, Masawa, yeah. and, you know, Anoki probably. Oh, yeah, Antonio Inoki, the great Kabuki, the, the great, great Kabuki, Muga. Yeah, Giant Baba. Giant Baba. Although he probably died around this time, so. Yeah. Yeah, there's, like I said, a lot of great Japanese wrestlers at that time as well mm -hmm. as today but so then you have oh yeah <laughs> you've got this was sort of like an ECW match because you've got Sabu Mr. Chan or I'm guessing just Jerry Lynn in a mask oh right yeah 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 I saw that, I'm like, okay, Mr. JL, who the fuck is that? Yeah. I'm, like, everybody's familiar with Sabu. Yes. Throughout his long, his career in ECW, and a little bit in TNA, and I think he also did a little bit with the WWE as well. Oh, he did, yeah. He was there. So, yeah, he's had an interesting career, and one of those guys that, like, would do anything for the business. There's an interesting story when they first invaded WWF in 97 and unfortunately I wasn't allowed to watch that but they had Sabu jump off the R onto whoever the fuck it was at the time. So yeah and then he came back and to the invasion angle and again with the WWE CW thing and of course the TNA stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it was pretty cool to see that, but, you know, he's kind of still on impact. Yeah, he makes appearances from time to time. He's got this old lady with him. Yeah. He calls. I have no idea. Princess something or other or whatever. Yeah. A, a, a ripoff of the genie from the TV show and the... Oh, right, really? only Barbara Eaton. 60s, I think? Yeah, it what? was. Excuse me, yeah. Yeah, well, she does kind of resemble that. Mm -hmm. But 
ten times as ugly. But anyways, mm-hmm. Sabu won the match. Years. And next you go on to Black Slugger taking on. You know, it got so much potential, and it just goes to a disqualification. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, that's what basically happened. I can't remember how it happened, but it did basically happen that way. And Ming's like Haku, one of the biggest guys that you know the Samoan heritage and the big, the toughest guy in the business. Oh yeah, one of the baddest dudes in the business. A, a guy that you truly would not want to fuck with. <laughs> nope. And then Lex Luger getting in an accident and getting a steel plate in his arm. Mm-hmm. He uses that as a tactic. But one of the worst talkers in WWE and ECW or, well WCW and wherever else. I didn't think he was a good talker. That's why I had Bobby Heenan. Well, when he first came in. The thing about Lex Luger, uh, anytime he did a promo or an interview in the ring or whatever it was, his delivery was a lot like Jake Roberts. Very slow, very methodical, very... Yeah. One very neutral, very well thought out, well said, whatever. Yes, he would have those moments of, you know, raising his voice and kind of getting all amped up and whatever, but for the most part, he was very neutral, very relaxed, very monotone, and he could get his point across yeah. very easily. Without having to scream and yell and, and get all excited and have a bunch of energy, like I said, he would have those moments of he would be excited or whatever, but yeah. very monotone with his delivery, and not very often would he ever like screw up what he was saying. And I actually found him very good. Hmm. That's probably the shit I've seen, I guess. I don't know. Like, I agree. He did do some good interviews, but there's also a lot of duds. But, no, no, nevertheless, they don't want to talk about disqualification. So you have this match. You got two of the four horses. Brian Pillman and Arn Anderson versus Sting and Flair. <laughs> Now this match started with Sting taking on both Pillman and the Enforcer, of course, because they said that Ric Flair was injured. So, in the middle of the match, you know, Ric comes in, he goes to his corner, Sting's getting all fucked up, and, you know, Ric's just going like this, Sting, get in my hand, and all that shit. So he finally stings Flair, and Flair gets into the ring, and turns on Sting. And I'm just going, gee, I didn't know that would happen. So it was just a three-man beatdown on Sting. I can't remember who came to Sting's rescue. But yeah, basically, you knew that was going to happen. I don't care what anyone says. Never trust a horseman. Nope. Yeah. You know, Flair did it to Sting. Arn Anderson did it to Dustin Rhodes. Yeah. They're horsemen. They're bad guys. They're, you know. It's fucking disgusting. Yeah. But whatever. I mean, it is what it is. Obviously, years later, it would be kind of the same thing with Flair and Austin teaming up. Then Flair turning on Austin. I saw that match, actually. Mm. 
So anyways, yeah, that was interesting. A disqualification as well. But mm -hmm. It was the first match of two. You've got the monster truck match. You got Hulk Hogan versus the giant. Now Hulk Hogan. And this was, you know, when he it wasn't fully the black and white, but mm -hmm. he had like the black bandana with the black shirt and it was kind of like the New World Order pants. Then there was a part where he wore like a, a black mask over his face mm -hmm. or a hood. I don't even know what that was. So anyways, he did that. He had Jimmy Hart in his corner still. And then they were going to have a monster truck match on top of the Detroit. I can't remember the name of the building. Uh, the Joe Louis Arena. The Joe Louis Arena, yeah. That's right. So, anyways, they had the uh, guy come out and talk about the monster truck and how big those two monster trucks are because, you know, the giant is tall and whatever and Hogan's all muscly. Anyways, they get in and they do the whole thing and basically it turns into a fight. You see the giant being like holding on, you know, he fell, he's holding on and Hogan's trying to get to him and then he falls into the Detroit River, although I'm not even sure what's going on there. <laughs> so for a while you see Shivani and Heenan panic, well Heenan's panicking and Shivani's like, yeah, I don't know what's going on either, but you know, we gotta continue. <laughs> the show's gotta go on. Yeah. Anyways, so I guess Lex Luger is <laughs> Yeah. And, well, I mean, Macho Man won this one, so that was awesome. Yeah. And then you've got this match. You've got Giant taking on Hogan. World title. And, or WCW title, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, this match was interesting. And another heel turn, except this time it was Jimmy Hart. Now, it's kind of funny because they kind of had the Yeti come into the picture. Yeah. So the Yeti comes out. And they're in the ring, and there's the giant, like, bear-hugging Hogan. Mm -hmm. And then the Eddie comes out, and it looks like he's humping the shit out of Paul. Mm -hmm. Which, I don't even know what the hell that was. Anyways. Yeah, yeah I remember seeing that. I was like, what the fuck? Uh, this was the night that Jimmy Hart actually turned on Hogan mm -hmm. and joined the Dungeon of Doom. Yeah, but anyhow, that was interesting. This show, now that I think about it, was basically a disappointment. Mm -hmm. I mean, he had count outs, he had disqualifications, and I mean, he had two heel turns one predictable one and one unpredictable one. But I mean, this is like why I didn't watch WCW in the first place. Because you had like maybe one or two good matches and then the rest of the matches were shit. Like I don't know. I mean, your dad watched WCW too, didn't he? Yeah. So what did he think? It was good. Yeah, they had a lot of good moments in it. I mean, that's for sure. I just think that for its time, it was kind of like their matches could have been a hell of a lot better instead of this whole bullshit disqualification thing. I mean, that's why people go to pay-per-views and they pay your money. <laughs> but for what it was, I mean, there were some great matches. I mean, okay, you have a card, whether it be on TV, whether it be a pay-per-view, you have a disqualification, Throughout the night, fine, whatever. You do two, okay, that's not bad, I guess. But three is like, the fuck are you thinking? Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's fucking bullshit. I mean, seriously. 
And the fact that, I don't know, Ted Turner, you know, Tony Schiavone, I don't even fucking know, Eric Bischoff allowed that shit. I don't, like, that's just crazy to me. And you look at everything else in between. Hogan and Warrior's second match was a bullshit match. Yeah, that was bad. You know, you had the end of Halloween Havoc 98 when fucking Piper comes out. And that's the end of the show. Mm -hmm. There was no resolution of this match. Yeah. You know, and then, you know, a few others. But, I mean, this was just the shits. You know, it could have been a lot better. Unfortunately, it wasn't. I mean, we've, we've done a lot of WCW pay-per-views. And this one isn't as bad as, let's say, uh, Bash at the Beach 90. Well, I think, oh, I think we did a Halloween Havoc, too, last year. I believe so, yeah. And I think that was the shiz. Mm -hmm. I don't I mean, so there it is. It's too bad, but that's just the way it, the company was at the time. Pretty much, yeah. So, that was Halloween Havoc 95. And mm -hmm. next week, I believe, is AEW Gear Up. Or... Yeah, whatever that yeah. heck it's called. Matt will probably put it at the bottom of the screen. Top of the screen, bottom of the screen, whatever. Yeah. And I, I was thinking about this, so talk more about it with you because that's how ideas go yeah no I was thinking about because we did the top you know whatever favorite movies the sequel mm. maybe in the week after next let's do top favorite TV shows the spinoff or something like that okay well, I mean, if you could think of more TV shows. Yeah. I know there's a few that I mentioned last time, and I didn't go into full detail, but... Yeah, we could try that. Yeah. So, we'll do that. And then, yeah, so... Well, this is me, Matt. I'm Killer Kyle. Anything else you want to add before? Last night, we watched Crown Jewel. Pretty good show. Yeah. Watched earlier NXT. That was a pretty good show itself. Too. Yeah, for sure. And I watched AEW Dynamite. That was pretty cool as well. Yeah. I'm sure here in a little bit we'll watch SmackDown. Yes, we're gonna do that too. Yeah. So, <laughs> the wrestling is amazing. Oh yeah, for sure. For yeah, sure. And one day we'll do another this week in wrestling because actually. Impact is on Tuesdays now. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Burn the house down. Time. Burn the house down. Deuces. What's that, Corrupt the Kermit the Frog? Tell everybody to, to subscribe or you'll suck out their eyeballs and drink their brains out of their nose. I no. have to be <laughs>